Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and today I released an update for my Strands Geometry Node library. And I wanted to make a little video just to update everyone about what had changed and to, um, and to show the new features. It's a fairly minor update, it was mostly to fix some little bugs, so I'll go through those first, and then there were a couple of new nodes. So the first change I made was to fix a SAG modifier because it was actually missing the selection uh, input. So now it has a selection input and you can choose what strand you want to apply the SAG to. Before it always applied to everything, which meant that you couldn't do things like have the SAG be added after the add lashings. And that was important because if you change the SAG amount, then the, the lashings actually change their angle to match the end of the tangent of the curve, like this. Which isn't always look the way you want it to. So the solution for that should have been able to be to put the SAG modifier after the lashings modifier. But then that caused this problem to happen because SAG was being applied to every segment of the curve. So now you can have the lashings get added just to the base mesh, which is another change, by the way, is there's now an option to select the base mesh in the selection. Um, previously, it just said everything primary, secondary, and then the different strands. But now there's also this base mesh, which will select like the input curves, anything that's not tagged as something special yet. So then instead of applying the SAG to everything like we have here, we can apply the SAG just to the base mesh, which is our input curve. And because the lashings get added first before the SAG, um, and we're tagging them as the secondary strand, once we add the SAG, uh, it doesn't apply to those lashings. And then you can change the SAG amount without changing the lashings. So those are two changes, uh, adding a base mesh to the selection and then adding a selection feature to the SAG. Then on the wrapper modifier, there was a problem where when you changed the resolution of the wrapper, the size of the, the like the overall size of the wrap would uh, increase or decrease. So right now this object's approximately this wide. And before, if you reduce the resolution down, it would get smaller and kind of go inside of the object. And that's because when, um, you're, when it's sampling points on this pole to snap to, um, if their points are farther apart, they're more likely to have the edge intersect through the mesh, basically. Um, I have fixed that now so that it will try to keep this uh, overall size of the wrap uh, more constant as you change the resolution. So if we change this all the way down, you can go all the way down to like six before it starts to go inside of it. And then as you go up, it should stay pretty much similar in size. So that was a minor improvement to the wrapper node. And then for the add dangles modifier, there actually wasn't a way to control how far apart the dangles were added. It was based entirely on the resolution of the curve uh, before that. But now you can control how frequently the dangles get added by adjusting the spacing value. I do think there's a lower limit of like 0.25. I think if you go below 0.25, it will merge them all and delete them. Um, and that's because there's a feature to try to make sure the dangles don't get added too close together normally. Um, but so yeah, 0.25 is the lower limit. So you can place them that close together and then you have control over the spacing and then you can randomize how even that spacing is. And this value can go higher than one as well. And I don't know, there's some, I think that was the main controls I added for that. But the dangles, add dangles modifier was changed slightly to give you a little more control over how it worked. And then finally, I just did some housekeeping. I cleaned up the file a bit, purged some data that wasn't needed in there. There were some like early test and broken versions of some of the modifiers still in the file. Um, so I've deleted those out of the file. They're still in, if you want to look at them for some reason, they're still in the version one uh, version of the library. And then there's a couple of new modifiers that I added. One of them is this finalize modifier, and it's meant to be added at the very bottom of your stack after you've um, built your strand exactly how you want it. You can finalize it to uh, delete all of the extra data and control curves and stuff that the strand system adds to be able to you know, have this modular setup where you can add all the different parts onto the same strands and stuff. Um, by adding the finalize modifier, it deletes all of that extra data, which just sort of cleans things up if you wanted to export or apply your modifiers to export to a, a external format like an OBJ or an FBX. You can do that or, um, yeah, I don't know. If you just want to apply it, get rid of all the strands data. If you're done building what you're building with the modifiers and you just want to convert it to a mesh, 
you can delete a bunch of the extra attributes and it'll get rid of extra uh, geometry that's in the mesh because um, there's actually curves inside of this, like single edge curves that um, will get converted to a mesh if you don't add the finalized modifier. So finalized modifier, just if you want to export or convert it to a mesh, it'll clean it up. Uh, with that, you can realize instances or not. If there's instances in the mesh, you can remove the attributes, which deletes things that's used by like the wind system and which like all of these strands have different IDs. So this would be like ID zero or ID one. Um, it gets rid of all those ID attributes. Um, there's a bunch of different things it gets rid of. And then you can also remove the material attributes if you want to. Um, that's the colors and the shader ID for which texture to apply. Um, if you don't want that, those attributes on there either, you can get rid of those. And then the coolest sort of new modifier is this add objects modifier. And it allows you to create things like a string of beads or barbed wire, the barbs on a barbed wire fence uh, can do that. Or I don't know, anything, any sort of object you want to string along the curve. You can also use it to put like a pendant on a necklace or something like that. Um, this has options for selection, so you can like select and put it right in the middle of the curve. Um, you can control the spacing, how close or far apart they are. You can control the randomness, which they should be all the same size or different sizes. Um, scale, you make the scale uniform or not uniform. Um, and these get added as instances, and you can tag those instances as different kinds of strands. They also get assigned a random value. So in your shader, you can add a random attribute and and it adds the rope color as well. So you can add use those to make the materials. So it has this color attribute. The shader ID doesn't actually do anything, I don't think. So I probably should have removed that, but the, um, the color is applied to it. So you can change the color of it. And then it's also each instance is given a random value. One thing to note about that is in your shader, make sure you choose the type of the attribute is geometry by default, and you want it to select instancer if you have them as instances. If you realize those instances, then it would need to be the geometry. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of different options for this. You can also apply it to just the ends, which will let you add like caps on the end of your strand, and those will point away from so you can choose different object here. You can choose what axis. So this is on the x-axis. So then you can see we have the x-axis pointing away on this end and pointing away on that end. You can also um, rotate them. So if we selected this object, this object. So then you can see here, if we rotate this, you can rotate them around. You can change how random that rotation is. And then you can choose whether it starts from the normal or starts from up on the z-axis. Um, so yeah, a bunch of different options for putting objects along or at the ends of your strands. You can also choose a collection instead of an object, and it'll pick a random object from the collection to instance on the curve. And then just as a bonus trick that um, David W. from the Discord server actually pointed out is that you can... Um, it's just a normal curve, so you can actually apply an armature to the curve and then animate it with the rig. So you could come in here and have your rope be animated with a with bones and an armature if you wanted. Um, so I thought that was a cool way of controlling the strand that I hadn't actually considered when I was building the tool. I was focused mostly on the geometry nodes and the modifiers, but um, yeah, if you wanted to animate the rope with a uh, a rig you can do that as well and if you want to set that up really quickly what you can do is if we got rid of this here you can actually duplicate your curve and get rid of all of the modifiers assuming it's or whatever you need to do to get it down to just a single curve strand and then you can convert that to a mesh and add a skin modifier and then you can just create an armature from the skin modifier and then you have a, a rig already set up that follows the curve perfectly and you can just parent with uh, envelope weights, and then you can move the um, that modifier to the top of the stack, and then you have a rig that you can animate. And then if you want to set it up like I had before, um, you can add constraints and whatever to make it easier to control. So anyway, I don't know whether that'll be useful to people or not, but I thought it was a cool uh, 
way of controlling it that I hadn't thought about. So thought I'd mention it. So anyway, that's all I've got for this one. The strands library is updated. You can download the new version two of the files from Blender Market and Gumroad. Um, and there's no information about the new modifiers on my website yet, but um, there's information about the strands library in general and all of that on my website. Um, if you're this is your first time hearing about it, uh, head over there to check it out. And um, I'll be updating that at some point with the new changes. Anyway, hopefully that was interesting. That's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.